Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about stack. Now what stack means? Now stack is basically an ADT in data structures and as you know ADT stands for abstract data type. So when you talk about abstract data type we only focus on the features it provides but not the implementation. Now in stack it provides you multiple features. When I say features we have a list of features like we can add element and normally when you want to add element we use a term called as push you can uh, you can delete the element using pop so you can do that with the help of pop or you can you cannot say delete but you can take out the element from the from the stack and then you can also look for the elements so you, you can find an element the first element and that, then you can do that with the help of peak again you will we'll understand this in detail later so we can apply a push operation we can say pop and we can say peak Stack, it supports a feature called as leave for, which is last in first out, which simply means whatever element you have inserted last, you can access that first. So leave for stands for last in first out. So whatever element you have added last, you can access that first. To explain this, we will be having a stack here. So the last element you have inserted is the first you can take out. And in stack, you have only one entry point. So you have only one entry and exit point that means this is the only entry and this is the only exit so this one will remain closed you can apply a lock here so this one will remain closed the only place where you can entry you can enter the values is from one point from here and you can take it out so whatever element you have inserted last you can access that first but do we use this in the real world and the answer is yes example let's say if you are working on a task so let's say if you're working on a project it's a very big project maybe that project is let's say a and that project will maybe will take uh, six days. So it will take six days to complete this project. And suddenly the old project or the old version, which is already deployed on the server, it is giving you an error. Now you let's say you got a bug. Now at that point, what do you think? Will you complete the entire A project and then you will think about the bug or you will try to fix the bug first? And of course, right, a bug is something which a user is facing nowadays. So of course you have to fix the, fix the bug first and then you have to think about the earlier task. So in this scenario, you will try to fix this bug. That means you are keeping your job A aside and you're focusing on B now. So you started working on B and you thought, okay, in next three to four hours, I will complete this B, uh, I, will, I will fix this bug. So you're keeping this task A aside and you're working on B now. And certainly that this is your lunch time now. So you are going for lunch. So let's say this is 1 p.m. and then you want to have your lunch. You're going for the lunch now. So let's say that is task C. So task C is your lunch time. And now you are having your lunch. So while you're having your lunch, of course, you will not be working on B at the same time. Because when you're having a lunch, you should do only one thing at a time. You should have your lunch. So when you're working on, you're, you're doing your lunch, you, you will not be working on B. That means you have kept B aside. Now, once you complete your lunch, what do you think? Which is the first task you will resume? A or B? It's B, right? Because this is the last task you have left. So when you say B, this is what you left last. So last in, first out. So this, this is what you will resume. And once you complete B, then you will resume with your A. So that is last in, first out. So the last task which you are working is the first thing you will, you will resume. Now, do we use this in some other concept? Yes, example, if you have a stack of books. So whenever you have a stack of books, what you do is the first book, so you will keep the first book here, then second book, then third book, and then fourth book. So once you keep all this book, once above, once above, above other, the first book you can access is the last book you have kept here, right? So this is how your, so let's say if you have, if you have kept one more book here, then this is the last book you can access first. Or this is the first, this is a book you can access first. What about virtual world? So in virtual world as well, you know, when you talk about recent applications, so in Windows, we say Alt tab. So when you say Alt tab, it will show all the applications which you are working with. So when I say Alt tab here, you can see this is the first application. This, this is the last access application. So you can see that first, which is paint. Uh, then I got this recording software, which I have opened second last. And then I was working on a notepad. That's the third. So that's the third in the list. And before that, I have opened my, my computer. And before that, I went to Google or Chrome. So this is the this is the stack, right? So the last access element is coming at first here. So yes, we use stack a lot of time in, in real world and in virtual world as well. So let's try to understand how do we work with elements. So let's say I want to store these four elements here. We got five, we got eight, we got three, and we got two. So I want to insert these values in a, in a stack. So what we do is we create a stack here. And again, if you want to insert the value, we will, we will use push. 
So using push, you can insert the value. Using pop, you can get the value, the last value. And using find, if you don't want to delete the value from the stack, you just want to see the value, you can use peak. Question is, how do we implement this? In fact, we will be seeing the implementation later. But then there are multiple ways of implementing this. We have the array way, so you can implement that with the help of array. In fact, in array as well, we can go for fixed length array. Then we, we can go for dynamic length array. Or then we can also go for linked list. So we have different implementation. So we can go with the array implementation using fixed or dynamic length. We can go for linked list. But it doesn't matter what you go for. Let's say if you talk about array. So let's say if I create an array of four elements here. Right, so we got an array of four elements. And this is index value 0, index value 1, index value 2, index value 3. Now how will you insert the value? So this is the only entry point and this is the only exit point, right? So if you want to enter the values, you will be using a method called as push or a function called as push. In this push, you will pass the value. So whatever value you want to pass, let's say if I say i, i will represent 5 or 8 or 3 or 2, whatever you pass. So once you pass a value here, that value will be assigned to 0. So let's say we got 5 here. Then when you say 8, 8 will be assigned here. Now once you inserted this two value or maybe let, let's say add 3 as well. So we got 3 here. Now which is the last element you can access? So if you have entered 3, this is the last element you can access. But how do you know which is the last element? So you can simply use a variable called as top. Now top will have the uh, top will have an index value of the isn't element. So index value 2, we have element 3. This is the top element. And when you insert 2 now, it will the 2 will go here. Simple, right? Now how about if I say pop? So when you say push, everything goes in this tag where you say 5, 8, 3, 2. So the value will go down. And then when you say pop, it will remove the first element because when you say you have inserted 2, this is where you are represent representing your top, right? This is the top topmost element. So this is the element which will remove first. So when you say pop, it will remove it will remove this 2. And let's say after that if you are inserting 12. So let's say after that, you, but after saying pop, you are you inserting 12. So 12 will come here because that's the last element you can access. So again, that will be go back to 2. Yeah, when you delete this element 2 before, uh, it will go back to 3, okay? The, the, the top variable will go back to the index number 2, which is 3 in this case. So this is how you you push and you pop. So the last element which is added is the first thing you can you, you have an access. So when you say pop, it will delete the element, it will give you the element and it will delete the element from the stack. But what if you don't want to delete the element? You can simply use find. And use, to use find, we normally use a function name as peak. So when you say peak, at this point, it will give you 12. Pretty cool, right? Now let's say once you have inserted all these values in the in the stack and the stack is full, right? Because the size of the stack was four. Uh, we can make it dynamic. We can use linked list. But let's say if I'm using a fixed length array. So if you're using a fixed length array here, and if you have increased, if you have crossed the limit of your stack, which is four in this case, if I try to add one more element. So let so at the end here, if I try to add an element which is one. Now the moment you say one, if you if you try to add one, it will give you an error, and that error is overflow error because you are trying to overflow the stack. That's one 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 case. So if you try to push the value and if if your size is full, it will give you overflow error. What if you try to delete the element? If you try to pop and your your stack is empty, let's say if you don't have any element here. So if a stack is empty and if you try to fetch value at this point, it will give you another error. So if your stack is empty and you're trying to pop, it will give you error, which is underflow error. So underflow is when you when you don't have the value and try to pop the value means from it. So that's how you have uh, overflow and underflow concept. Th those are errors basically. And there's one more thing here. With this push, pop and peak, we can use some other methods as well or functions as well. Example, we can get the size of the uh, size of the stack using size method. You can also check if the stack is empty with the help of is empty function. So again, you can implement whatever methods you want, but these are the basic ones for stack. Um, I hope you enjoyed this session. Let me know in the comment section. And if you have any question, you can do that. You can put that in comment area as well. So thank you so much for watching everyone.